what's going on on my YouTube buddies. I'm Jacob and I'm back with another complete collection video. It's been a couple months. Some busy things have happened personally where I haven't had time to film one of these videos, but I hope to finish this complete collection series throughout the rest of 2022. So the last one I did was N and O, if I'm not mistaken. So in today's video, I'll be sharing all of the DVDs and Blu-rays in my physical media collection, starting with the letters P and Q. I got quite a bit of movies to show in today's video, so let's get to looking at all the movies in the collection with these two letters. All right, starting off, Pacific Rim from Guillermo del Toro. I have always enjoyed this movie. Awesome action in it. Characters are a little underdeveloped, but still an awesome visual experience. Paddington, one of the best family movies in recent years. I actually really love this character, and it's just such a charming movie. And likewise, we got Paddington 2, which I dare say is even better than the first. It's one of the best family movies of all time, I dare say. Pan's Labyrinth from the Criterion Collection from Guillermo del Toro. Awesome artwork, by the way. I watched this film for the first time around the time I did my Guillermo Director project. And this movie's fantastic. Some amazing visuals in it, a very touching story, and one of the darkest fantasy stories I think I've ever watched. Really good movie if you haven't seen it before. Panic Room from David Fincher. I don't think this is one of Fincher's best movies. It's definitely one of his more conventional narratives, but still a very well done movie with great performances and it's very suspenseful throughout. So this one's still pretty good. Paper Moon from Peter Bogdanovich. This is one of my upcoming Peter Bogdanovich reviews on my channel and I've seen this film before and it's absolutely fantastic. It's a great comedy. Uh, it also has some serious elements, but overall it's a very sweet story. I do really like this one. Parasite from Bong Joon-ho. This was the first foreign film that ever won Best Picture, and I think it was a very well-deserved win. This is a fantastic movie that came out of nowhere. There's some excellent twists and turns in this movie. Very entertaining story. Very bonkers story as well, but Bong Joon-ho embraces every minute of it with his direction, and this movie is absolutely amazing. The Parent Trap. This is apparently a two-movie set. I'm not... I didn't even know there was a Parent Trap 2 when I bought this thing, but I've seen the original. This is the original with Haley Mills. I don't have the remake Disney did with Lindsay Lohan, but that movie's pretty good too. But uh, the original is a classic, and it's definitely a must-own if you're a Disney fan. The Passion of Joan of Arc. This is a Criterion release. I think this was the original edition of it. I know there's a new edition that you can get on Blu-ray, but I have the original. And this movie's phenomenal. This is a silent film from 1928. The actress who plays Joan of Arc in here, considering this is a silent movie, she gives one of the most emotionally devastating performances I've ever seen in a movie and it's such a raw powerful movie based on the life of Joan of Arc and the uh, unfortunate death that she had to endure in her life and I think this is a very powerful movie with so much uh, compelling drama in it that was very well done hard to watch too Speaking of hard to watch, The Passion of the Christ, but this is a phenomenal movie, one of the best uh, film adaptations of the life of Jesus. This focuses mainly on the crucifixion of Jesus. It's definitely very violent, uh, one of the most violent movies out there, but I think it was needed to show how much Jesus was willing to die for the sins of the world. And I think uh, Mel Gibson did a phenomenal job directing this movie, along with Jim Caviezel, who did a phenomenal job of playing Jesus. Very well done movie. Paths of Glory from the Criterion Collection. Uh, awesome movie. Uh, Stanley Kubrick. It's been a while since I've seen this. I'll be revisiting it real soon for my Stanley Kubrick director project. But I do highly enjoy this one. This is one of the director's better movies. And Kirk Douglas is fantastic in it. The Patriot, starring Mel Gibson. This was directed by Roland Emmerich. Yeah, the same guy who did all those disaster movies. 
Yeah, he also did The Patriot, and I dare say this is his best movie. It's actually a really great war story, and Mel Gibson is phenomenal in this movie. Really good. Paul Blart, Mall Cop. Yeah, need I say more? It's a pretty dumb movie. I loved it as a kid. It's been a while since I've seen it, but I guess it's kind of a guilty pleasure. The Peanuts Holiday Collection. This has uh, The Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, and Charlie Brown Christmas. And all three are classic. Uh, some of the most iconic Peanuts specials. The Christmas one especially. That's my all-time favorite. Alright. I uh, got some more down here. The Peanuts movie. In my opinion, the best film from Blue Sky Studios. Did an amazing job at recapturing the charm of what made the Peanuts special so good. And the CGI animation was really good too, surprisingly. Percy Jackson and the Lightning Thief. I know people tend to dog on this one because it didn't really follow the book too well. I thought the film was fine. I think it's kind of a guilty pleasure. I actually did enjoy the direction. Uh, Chris Columbus directed it. There was still some effort put into this movie. Not the best translation from book to screen, but still enjoyable in its own right. Peter Pan. This is one of my favorite Disney films of all time. Still in my top ten from Disney Animation. I love the adventure, the world building, the characters. This is just a classic for a reason. and It's one of my personal favorites. Pete's Dragon. This is the original Pete's Dragon from 1977. I actually prefer this version over the new version. I just think this film has a lot more charm to it. Whereas the remake I thought was a lot more emotionally manipulative in my opinion. This version I think is so much better. I love the musical numbers. Uh, the characters are all charming. Maybe it goes on a little too long, but still a great underrated Disney classic. This is just a collection of some of the classic Pink Panther shorts. I also have the Pink Panther Christmas special. I reviewed it for my... 31 Days of Christmas series last year. I thought this one missed the mark big time on what made the Pink Panther cartoons awesome. I also have the Pink Panther remake starring Steve Martin, which was a really enjoyable remake. I think it's a good uh, new version of the Pink Panther franchise. Steve Martin especially is awesome as Jacques Clouseau. Got Pinocchio, another one of the best classic Disney movies of all time. This one is in my top five from Disney Animation. I love this story. An emotional journey. The dark moments messed me up as a kid, but it, I guess, made me a, who I am today, if not for Pinocchio. So I do love the morality tale of the story. Beautiful animation, and it's still one of Walt Disney's finest achievements. All right, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl. This is one of my favorite live-action Disney movies of all time. I love Gore Verbinski's direction. Johnny Depp especially is awesome as Captain Jack Sparrow, and this was like one of the great lightning-in-a-bottle experiences of not just a franchise, but for the Disney studio. This movie was awesome, and I have the whole franchise. Uh, Dead Man's Chest, really enjoyable sequel. Some of my favorite action set pieces in the whole franchise, like this one on the wheel, that was crazy how they pulled that off. At World's End, I think it's super underrated. I think it's my second favorite in the franchise behind the first. A uh, really great way of wrapping up the original trilogy. I love what they did with the story, and I love the epic scope. And then we got On Stranger Tides, my least favorite in the series. I don't really care for this one too well. And I only saw Dead Men Tell No Tales in theaters. I thought it was okay. Better than On Stranger Tides, but definitely pales compared to the first three. I think when they lost Gore Verbinski as director, the movies kind of fell apart. The Pitch Perfect trilogy. Fun fact, I have only seen the first film, and I love it. I haven't seen two and three, but I think I found the DVD on sale for all three, I think, on Black Friday. I just haven't gotten around to seeing the other two. But the first one's pretty awesome. And this is just a series of all the Pixar shorts on Blu-ray. Definitely a must-own if you love the Pixar shorts, like I do. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. This is an awesome comedy from John Hughes. Steve Martin and John Candy are a great duo. It's funny as it is heartfelt, and it's one of the director's best movies. 
Planet of the Apes. The, this is the original from 1968 starring Charlton Heston. And I dare say this is the best film in the franchise. Even though the makeup is a little bit goofy in the day standards for the apes, uh, this one just did a really good job setting up its world. Uh, some of the themes it explores I thought was very fascinating. And it has one of the all-time great twist endings in any sci-fi movie. Uh, this movie was just well done for its time. Fun fact, this movie was written by Rod Sterling, the host of The Twilight Zone. And I think that's what makes this movie all the more eerie, is you got the Twilight Zone guy responsible for developing this movie. Alright, then I got the recent Apes trilogy, Rise of the Planet of the Apes, fantastic almost like a prequel reboot of the Apes franchise. And I love Andy Serkis and the role of Caesar throughout all three movies. But this one was pretty good. We got Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which I thought was even better. This was the first of the two directed by Matt Reeves. And then we got War for the Planet of the Apes, which I thought was very well done as well. All three of these are phenomenal. Pocahontas. Uh, this one gets a ton of hate. I get where some of the hate's coming from, especially with like the historical inaccuracies, but if you look at it as its own story, I still think it's pretty good. I think uh, the songs are excellent. It's Obviously, the animation's good. And I think its heart was in the right place, too. And even though it's not one of the best films in the Renaissance era, I still think it's pretty good in its own right. All right, The Polar Express. This was one of my childhood favorites. And yeah, I get why pe you w if why people wouldn't like this movie if you can't get past like the motion capture animation and the uncanny valiness. Uh, some of the it has aged a little bit, but I still think the movie is very visually dazzling. I love Robert Zemeckis' direction that he put and how he expanded a very simple story and made it an awesome 90-minute animated feature with uh, incredible themes. I love the score from Alan Silvestri, and I think I just think this is a great story that uh, definitely defines the spirit of Christmas in so many ways. This is one of my absolute favorites. Palm Poco. This is one of the weirdest films I've ever watched, and it's not one of my favorites from Studio Ghibli. There's some very bizarre stuff in this movie. It's not horrible, but it is just so weird uh, with these like. Uh, raccoons and their superpowers and them trying to protect their homes and stuff. It is just so weird. Like, there's a whole sequence where raccoons use their private parts as weapons. I have no idea what goes on in the minds of some of these people. I know Japan and America think differently, but this one was just so weird. It's not one of my favorites, but it, I don't think it's their worst either. Got another Ghibli film here with Porco Rosso. This one is underrated. I actually really like this story. Yeah, we got a weird premise of a man cursing to a pig who's a fighter pilot, but this one actually has a lot more of humanity to the story, and there's some really touching stuff in this movie while also being an over-the-top action-adventure film. I thought this one was really, really good. Really underrated, too. The Post from Steven Spielberg. This one I really like. I know some people tend to dismiss it because it was an Oscar-nominated film. People say it tend to be overrated. But I actually really like this film. I love the performances. The storytelling was fascinating. Uh, very well-paced. Uh, one of the more underrated films from Steven Spielberg. All right, we got Predator. This is the three movie set. I got this on a rare steelbook that I own. This is the first three Predator movies. I've seen the original Predator. It's a lot of fun. I haven't seen Predator 2 or the third film, which is called Predators. So I need to check those movies out sometime. I have seen uh, the new film, The Predator, which came out several years ago. Oh, drop this. And I thought The Predator was terrible. And thankfully, that's not in this set. But the first three are in the collection. I guess that's the only Predator movies that exist in my book. Prep and Landing. This was a Christmas special that Disney made. It aired on TV back in 2009. Pretty enjoyable. I do like the premise. Uh, some really funny stuff here. Not amazing by any means, but still a pretty good Christmas staple in the Martin house. The Prestige. In my opinion, this is the best film from Christopher Nolan. So many 
incredible twists and turns. Of all the Nolan films, uh, the plot twist in this movie blew my mind the most. And the movie just gets better and better the more I rewatch it and pick up more pieces. I love the ensemble cast in this movie as well. Really cool premise of these feuding magicians and their obsession with one another. This movie is awesome. The Prince of Egypt. In my opinion, this is the best film from DreamWorks Animation. Did a really incredible job of uh, retelling the Moses story in animation. I think the voice cast is excellent. The animation is phenomenal. It did a great job of uh, telling the story in a very powerful way. And the songs are amazing as well. So the Prince of Egypt is an incredible achievement. The Princess and the Frog. This was the first of the Disney revival Disney films that started in 2009. Uh, this movie is a little underrated. I think this movie is fantastic. I love the 2D animation, the New Orleans setting. I thought it was really cool. I love Tiana as a character. And the songs from Randy Newman are great as well. And I actually like this. I put it on the same caliber as Tangled and Frozen, if not a little better, personally, because I love Tiana as a character so much. This is a great Disney film, and I highly recommend it if uh, you haven't seen it before. Princess Mononoke, another Studio Ghibli film. This is one of the studio's best films. Definitely one of the darker, more violent films from the studio. But it was done in such a very powerful way to show uh, the dark world building of the, of the story. I thought the characters were very fascinating, each of them with flaws, but you definitely see where they're coming from. And it was just a very inviting visual movie that's one of the studio's best movies. Prisoners. I got. I found this at an antique store. That's why the label's there. Uh, but this, in my opinion, is the best film from Denis Villeneuve. Very intense story. Uh, excellent performances. This is the movie that puts me on edge the most when I see uh, Denis Villeneuve's work. Uh, very powerful look at a desperate father's lengths to find his missing kids. Uh, some very intense stuff in this movie, but very engaging and one that I... I uh, do enjoy revisiting every once in a while when I'm in that mood. Pulp Fiction from Quentin Tarantino. Love this movie. This is one of Guillermo... No, not Guillermo. Why am I saying Guillermo del Toro? I'm crazy. Quentin Tarantino. This is one of his very, very best movies. It pretty much has no structure at all, but Tarantino was able to get away with that because the characters are so fascinating and the dialogue is as sharp as ever. This is one of the most like unique, unconventional movies out there and it's absolutely brilliant. We got Punch Drunk Love. Uh, this is from the Criterion Collection. This, in my opinion, is not only the best film from Paul Thomas Anderson, but this is probably my favorite performance of Adam Sandler. It's not comedic Adam Sandler. This is dramatic Adam Sandler, but dramatic Adam Sandler is awesome. And I love seeing Sandler play a more relatable, broken down character that's easy to latch onto than some of the more obnoxious comedy roles he's done over the years. This movie is fantastic if you haven't seen it, and it's I, I highly recommend you check this one out if you're just used to goofy Adam Sandler. Puss in Boots, uh, an okay movie from DreamWorks as far as spinoffs go. This one doesn't do anything special. Uh, the story, in my opinion, is kind of forgettable, but I guess there's some uh, fun little action set pieces in the film. Uh, Puss in Boots is a fun character. I am looking forward to the sequel coming out later this year. And that's all the P movies. The only Q movie I got is A Quiet Place. And uh, yeah, that's one of the best horror movies in the last few years. I love the suspense of that movie, the sound mixing. One of the most brilliant premises in a horror movie with uh, you can't say anything or else you'll be attacked by creatures who are sensitive to sound. I love the premise of this. Uh, Emily Blunt, John Krasinski are all good in this movie. Krasinski is an awesome director. I'm excited to see more of this series. A Quiet Place 2 is really good, but it's currently not in my collection at the moment, and I'll probably end up picking that one up real soon. Now, last but not least, as far as collections go, I also have the Pink Panther collection. This has, uh, I think, all but one of the Pink Panther films with Peter Sellers in it. Uh, this was the collection that pretty much inspired me to do the Pink Panther series on my channel with Dave from Interpreting the Stars, and 
Uh, the Peter Sellers era was probably the best when he and Bro Blake Edwards teamed up together to make these classic comedies. And these movies are really good, and Peter Sellers is really funny. So that's the last thing I wanted to share in this collection video. And there you have it, all the DVDs and Blu-rays in my P&Q collection and my physical media collection. I hope you enjoyed this video, and share your P&Q movies down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button to see more content, and the notification bell next to it, so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides physical media videos, I also do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!